December 6, 1998, the US built Unity Node and the Russian Saya module docked together in orbit, forming what would be the beginning of the International Space Station, the ISS. But with the growing conflict between NATO and Russia, it has left people wondering what will happen to the ISS in case they go to war. The ISS is not just a US and Russian project, it's a collaboration between 15 different space agencies. And while some modules are US made, some are Russian made, it's not as simple as just closing a door between the two. Both sides have modules that are vital to the operation of the space station. The ISS orbits in a low Earth orbit, meaning it will have to boost its orbit every month or so to prevent the station from crashing into the Earth's atmosphere and burning up in the process. The boosters needed for these maneuvers are Russian made. However, amongst the US modules, we find the large solar panel arrays used to provide power to the station. So without the US solar panels, there's no power for the thrusters, and without the thrusters, the station will eventually crash into the atmosphere, burn up, and be destroyed. After NATO began imposing sanctions on Russia after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Dmitry Ragozhin, the head of the Russian space agency, went to Twitter and threatened with exactly this, letting the ISS crash. He said that the station could fall anywhere in the US, Europe, India or China. However, should the ISS enter an uncontrolled re-entry, it is highly unlikely that it's going to hit any populated area. It is far more likely that it's going to crash into an ocean somewhere. But it's not just the station itself. There's also the issues of getting people and cargo on and off the station. Since the US closed its shuttle program, it has relied on the Russian Soyuz to transport people and cargo on and off the ISS. In recent years, the SpaceX Dragon capsule has made it possible for the US to carry personnel and cargo to and from the station, however. So in a war scenario, it would be possible for both sides to both get people home and also continue to transport people and goods up to the station should it be needed. At the time of this recording, there is currently four NASA astronauts, a German astronaut and two Russian cosmonauts on board the space station. Should conflict break out between NATO and Russia, it's highly unlikely that we are going to see actual fighting between people on the station itself, as the people on board rely on each other to work as a team in order to survive. A more likely scenario is that the respective countries is going to pull their personnel home, leaving the station abandoned. The scenario of having to abandon the ISS became very real at the beginning of 2020, right when Corona broke out, and we didn't really know back then how severe it was, and there were worries that a outbreak on the station would mean that they would have to evacuate everybody on board. And back then they re-looked at the possibilities of repopulating the station. Here we were probably looked at a much shorter timescale as you could send up another crew. But even then it was deemed a difficult task to repopulate a station after it has initially been abandoned. So therefore if we get into a scenario where all nations pull their personnel home from the ISS, it will likely mean the end of life of the station. Especially since a report from the 30th of November 2021 from NASA states that while plans call for the station's retirement in 2024, an extension of the ISS operation to 2030 is likely. So if the current plans are that the station should be retired in 2024 anyway, should it be abandoned? I think it's very unlikely that we're going to see it being repopulated again. At this point, what will probably happen is they will make a semi-controlled uh, re-entry and they will drop it into Point Nemo in the Pacific Ocean, far away from anything where most of it will burn up on re-entry and the few pieces that should make it all the way to the surface will, will smash into the ocean, sink to the bottom and probably stay there forever. During the cooling process, they have actually been heating up the telescope. They were afraid the telescope would cool down too quickly. 